pro-abortion activists have many arguments for abortion. But are these arguments reasonable? That's our topic this week on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Richard Fangrad. And I'm Calvin Smith. And our topic this week is refuting abortion arguments. Abortion has been one of the most important ethical issues in Western society for about the last four decades. And many people, sadly including many Christians, think abortion is a difficult and controversial issue. But there should be no difficulty or controversy at all. Right, because there's really only two issues to consider here. Right. One, is the unborn child, the, the fetus, a human being? And two, if so, is it ever acceptable to kill the unborn? So let's deal with both of these questions first, then, then in a few minutes we'll look at refuting the abortionist attempts to get around these. Right. Uh, so the answer to both questions is clear from the Bible, starting in Genesis. Genesis 25, 21, and 22 states, for example, um, and Rebekah, with uh, that's Isaac's wife, conceived, and the children struggled together within her. Now note that Rebekah's unborn twins, Jacob and Esau, are referred to as children. The Hebrew word used, banim, banim and is, is the usual word for sons after birth. Right. So unborn babies are not disposable clumps of tissue, right. despite the claims of many pro-abortionists. And they're always human right from fertilization, because all the DNA coding needed to build each individual's physical features are there in the fertilized egg. Right. It's absolutely false that the developing human goes through any kind of fish or reptile stage, you know, this recapitulation, despite fraud and evolutionary claims that we've dealt with this, uh, we've dealt with those types of things in previous Right, yeah, shows. in episode 19 of season two, we looked at frauds that continue to be taught in textbooks today. The famous embryo sequence supposedly showing how humans repeat an evolutionary progression as we develop before birth is totally false. Yeah. It involved fake drawings. And, and we talk about the details on that show. You can view it online at creation.com slash CML 2-19. Right. So the Bible, supported by science, teaches that the unborn baby is a human child. For example, Psalm 139, 13 and 14 says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Right, and Jeremiah 1 verse 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Luke 1, 41 to 44 says, And when Elizabeth heard the greetings of Mary, the baby leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greetings came to my ears, the baby in my womb, womb leapt for joy. Yeah. Those verses make it clear that the answer to the first question, is the unborn child a human being, is mm -hmm. yes. Now the answer to the second question is also answered consistently throughout Scripture. Again, uh, starting from Genesis, we can start there. Uh, Genesis 1, 26 and 29 and, and 2, 7 to 23 make it clear that man was created in God's image. Only one generation later, Cain committed the first murder, a destruction of this image, thus a severe offense to God. Right. And after God, uh, God judged mankind's violence in the global flood of Noah's day, God instituted the death penalty for murder, yeah. precisely because it destroyed this image of God. We're not going to cover capital punishment right now, but this is just to be clear that throughout Scripture, murder, that is the, the intentional killing of an innocent human, is regarded as a terrible sin. Right. Uh, since abortion kills an innocent human being, it is nothing less than murder. Mm -hmm. The two premises are unambiguously taught in Scripture. But evolutionary teaching, of course, has caused many people to deny its authority. Right. And today there are even people who, who self-label as Christians who are pro-abortion. A totally inconsistent position. And we'll be right back with more details on that. 
Don't you find it strange that when people go blind, we regard it as tragic? But when cave-dwelling fish go blind, it's hailed as evolution in action. There are cave-dwelling fish with a mutational defect that causes them to have scar tissue where they would normally have eyes. Usually, this is an obvious disadvantage, but in a totally dark cave, eyes are not necessary. In fact, it's actually a benefit not to have eyes because they are delicate and easily injured by sharp rocks. So, blind cave-dwelling fish are better suited to that environment. But is this really a legitimate example of evolution? Evolution is meant to explain how new DNA information arose to turn non-sighted creatures into sighted creatures. But in the case of blind cavefish, we have actually witnessed devolution because the information for eyes has been corrupted and lost. Once again, evolution goes in the wrong direction. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Well, if you just tuned in, we're, this week we're talking about refuting pro-abortion arguments. Right. In, in many cases, proving the first premise that the unborn is a human being is sufficient to impress uh, people about the horrors of abortion. And this is why most pro-abortion politicians totally ignore the unborn and shift the focus to a debate about women's, uh, a woman's right to choose. Right. Many mothers change their minds about getting an abortion upon seeing photos, uh, and especially today's 4D ultrasound yes. images, of what's growing inside her. You can clearly see that, uh, that a baby is not just some clump of cells. And then uh, having to you know, consider the disgusting brutality of the abortion methods yeah. that, that you know, are performed on their child, uh, you know, thoughts about that, that the child begin to turn the alternatives, of course, to, to abortion. Right, yeah. Uh, since we've established that the unborn really is human, we can show how uh, uh, horrific the usual pro-abortion arguments are if we legitimately substitute unborn baby with, for example, a two-year-old human. Mm. Since both the unborn baby and the two-year-old human, uh, the, the two-year-old are fully human, Let's do that. Right. I mean, this kind of undercuts this gut-wrenching heart tugs, you know, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. pro-abortionists use. You know, it, it's, it's an informal logical fallacy um, called appeal to pity. Right. So, so, yeah. so here we go. Let, let's say that uh, a two-year-old is, is so disruptive and causing so much heartache for, uh, you know, his solo mother that she wants to, him killed. And, and people support her, you know, right to choose to kill her own child in the in the following ways. Again, uh, this this parallel, uh, these, these parallel many of these pro-choice uh, arguments. Right. Okay. Here's one. It's the right of every two-year-old to be wanted. Yeah, we hear things like that. Okay. Uh, no one's forcing to, you to kill your your own uh, two-year-old. Right. We're not pro-killing two-year-olds. We're pro-choice. <laughs> we want to make two-year-old killing uh, safe, legal, and rare. If we make laws against this, then those who are rich enough will be able to hire a hitman to kill the toddler, while the poor cannot afford this, so such laws would discriminate against the poor. Right. Unless you're prepared to adopt this child, you have no right to tell the mother that she should not kill her two-year-old. If we don't make it possible for the mother to kill her two-year-old safely, then she will do it unsafely and possibly put her own health in danger. Mm. Laws against two-year-old killings would violate the woman's right to privacy, which judges tell us in the U.S. Uh, Constitution. It's speciesist to give homo sapien two-year-olds so much more protection than a chimpanzee two-year-old, for example. Mm. Some of these things are ridiculous, right? Of course. But we've heard these types of arguments used about babies in the womb. Yes. Yeah. You're opposed to killing two-year-olds only because you're a religious fanatic. Interesting. The child was conceived by incestuous rape, and the two-year-old's existence is a continual reminder to her mother of what happened, so the two-year-old should die because of her father's crime. Hmm. Stem cells could be harvested from this two-year-old that could help cure many horrible diseases and disabilities. You religious fanatics want to stop this scientific research and cut off all hope for a cure uh, of Alzheimer's, heart disease, Parkinson's, uh, quadriplegia, and, and diabetes. Right. So by substituting two-year-old into the mm. typical pro-abortion arguments, it enables you to see how awful these arguments really are. Yeah. Let, let's look at some of these uh, arguments that can easily be uh, re refuted here. Um, identical twins prove that life doesn't be begin at conception. Some people have argued that, right? Yep. Well, twinning may be a form of asexual reproduction where one embryo divides into two, but that doesn't mean that, that you know he or she wasn't an individual before then. Exactly. Right. Yeah, here's one. The early embryo doesn't look human. Well, yes, it yes, does. It does. 
it's just the way it should look at that age. And also, appearances are unreliable. Statues and store mannequins look human, but they're not. Right. Whereas abnormal-looking humans, like the Elephant Man, for example, right. are still very human. Yeah. Um, here's an argument. Most zygotes never make it to term. Well, the mortality rate for humans is still 100%, but this doesn't mean <laughs> yes. it's okay to actively murder somebody. Yeah. Uh, here's the, the pseudo-biblical argument that the account of Adam's creation shows that life begins when breathing starts. There's two responses here. Firstly, unborn babies do breathe, not just through their lungs. And secondly, the creation of Adam and Eve was a special case. Neither of them had mothers or came from an embryo, so it's illegitimate to, 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 to extrapolate from their example. It would, it would be just as illogical to claim that since they began lives as adults, that human life today doesn't begin until adulthood. Right. So really what we see here is these arguments just don't hold up to any kind of real scrutiny, but many people are swayed by these, you know, heart-tugging uh, arguments, yeah, or, or, arguments, or they just yeah. haven't walked through the logic of them. And uh, and especially Christians, it's very important that they uh, really think these things through. It's such an important issue. That's right. And we'll be back with more in just a moment. The vigorous promotion of evolution as established fact is causing many Christians to question the biblical creation account. And some non-Christians won't consider Christianity because they believe the Bible has been disproved by science. That's where Creation Magazine comes in. Creation Magazine is a family-friendly publication packed with cutting-edge science that supports the Bible, presented in an easy-to-understand format by some of the leading experts in their fields of study. Visit creation.com to subscribe today. On this week's episode, we're talking about refuting arguments for abortion. Right. Actually, the onus is on the pro-aborts to prove their claim that the unborn is really not a human baby, contrary to scripture and science. Uh, it's not enough to say that we don't know whether it's human. Uh, a hunter is criminally liable if he shoots toward movement in a bush, not knowing right. whether a human or a deer caused the movement, for example. Mm -hmm. An explosives engineer is, is criminally liable if he blows up a building, not knowing whether there are people inside. Right. Certainly, this is the, uh, the, the first argument that a, that a pro abort must justify, and it's worth holding their feet to the fire, so to speak, yes. rather than allowing sidetracking. If the baby is human and killing a human's wrong, then everything else is just a smokescreen. Right, uh, but proving the humanity of the unborn is not sufficient for those thoroughly stooped in evolutionism. They argue that the sanctity of life depends on being made in the image of God, but they believe that we all evolve from animals, so there's nothing special about humans. Hmm. Now you, you can see where, where that leads, right? Right, it, it, yeah. it's no wonder that strident evolutionists um, uh, such as philosopher Peter Singer and, and politician Barack Obama support infanticide as yeah. well as abortion. Years ago, it was, a, it was common to think that uh, what was being removed was a, a blob or a clump of cells, but most who would be in favor of abortion would draw the line uh, at birth. Right. But once yeah. the baby's outside the womb, nearly everyone agrees that he or she is entitled to the full protection of the law, regardless of what route the baby took to get there. Right, but the situation today is different. Mm -hmm. Peter Singer uh, is probably uh, most well, the, the, one of the most well-known bioethicists who, though he's, he's too humane to eat a hamburger and advocates giving rights to great apes, has no qualms about infanticide. Exactly. He readily admits that the unborn child is fully human, but argues that the humanity of the unborn child does not obligate society to preserve that life. In his book, Rethinking Life and Death, Singer takes the view that uh, newborn infants, especially if unwanted, are not yet full members of the moral community. And he proposes a 28-day time period in which he feels that, um, um, you know, that the infant might be killed before granting, uh, granting them human rights. So, so parents yeah. should have a 28-day time period whether they decide to off their kid uh, for, for whatever reason before they become you know, fully human in, in that sense. Right. Yeah, he says that killing is, uh, is not wrong at all. This sort of thought has been the basis for wrongful birth lawsuits by parents who claim that their disabled children should not have been born. It's right. amazing. Barack Obama opposed the U.S. Supreme Court decision upholding the ban on partial birth abortion, the gruesome procedure in which a late-term baby's body is delivered, leaving only the head uh, in the birth canal. 
Uh, then the abortional, abortionist uh, sucks the baby's brains out and delivers the dead baby uh, now um, that the, the head has been shrunk. And Obama supported that procedure. Yeah, uh, of course, this view of human life is the opposite of the biblical teaching that mankind was created in the image of God mm. and therefore possesses great intrinsic worth. So abortionists need to get rid of the Bible. Uh, bioethicist uh, Daniel Callahan argued that. Uh, he said, the first thing that bioethics had to do was to push religion aside. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Peter Singer says, uh, some opponents of abortion respond that the fetus, unlike the dog or chimpanzee, is made in the image of God or has an immortal soul. They thereby acknowledge religion is the driving force behind their opposition. But there is no evidence for these religious claims. And in a society in which we keep the state and religion separate, we should not use them as a basis for the criminal law, which applies to people with different religious beliefs or to those with none at all. Yeah. However, all law st stems, it, it comes from some group's perception of morality. Right. Uh, why should Singer's view of morality be the basis for law simply because it's godless? Right. I mean, and in, in light of the fact that most of the atrocities of, of the 20th century were committed under atheistic regimes, mm -hmm. one might think that a theistic aspect in ethics is a good thing. Absolutely. The lengths that people will go to justify killing humans is astounding. Yeah. And we're not going to be able to fully explore all the, the bad argumentation from the pro boards in this, this half hour show. So, uh, for more details, especially about attempts to justify infanticide, see the article on our website entitled, uh, blurring the line between abortion and infanticide. Yep. And you can see that at creation.com slash infanticide. And uh, we'll be back in one more. Dinosaur fossils are often found in an unusual posture characterized by their head thrown back, hind limbs bent and tails extended. Over the years, scientists have proposed different theories to explain this puzzling phenomenon. However, according to paleontologist Cynthia Marshall Foe, there is only one legitimate explanation, which is that the dinosaurs died of asphyxiation. It is well known that animals starved of oxygen when they die can go into this characteristic posture due to muscle spasms. This new understanding of dinosaur fossilization fits well with the Bible's account of history, where most dinosaurs were rapidly buried in sediment during the global flood. Starved of oxygen in their last moments, many dinosaurs assumed this unique asphyxiation posture. So the biblical flood provides a simple solution to a long-held dinosaur mystery. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. All right, welcome back. Our subject this week is a bit, a bit of a harder subject to deal with, refuting pro-abortion arguments. And we've been looking at two premises. Number one, is the unborn child a human being? And number two, if so, is it ever acceptable to kill the unborn? Now, for the great majority of people, if they come to realize that the answer to the first question is yes, the argument for abortion is over because most people know that murder is wrong. Right, and coming to that conclusion really isn't hard. You know, right. often yep. uh, photos of babies in the womb or videos of 4D ultrasound are sufficient for most people to see the unborn child is in fact human. Yes. J just do a search online for 4D ultrasound, for example. It's an amazing technology and you'll see this for yourself. And you know, get, it, get a video of the child at the the, the, the stage that the mother is at. And at every stage you'll find out this is a human being we're talking That's about. That's incredible. Here. Some of the technology helps us to see that nowadays. Uh, let's continue refuting some more pro-abortion arguments. Here's one. The life in the womb is really a part of the woman and the woman has the right to do as she wills with her body. Well, if it's a, a part of the woman, then does the woman have four arms, four legs, two heads, and four eyes? Is, is that what a human is? Right, right. If it's, if it's part of the woman, uh, it, it is part of the woman, only in the sense that the life is living and growing inside the mother. Her body is feeding the life. Her body is separate from the life that's growing in her. Right. The life growing in the womb can have a, a different blood type from the mother, and it has uh, separate brain waves. Uh, yes. It is, therefore, an independent life with its own human DNA. It, it, its nature is human, and it's the life, it, it's a life separate from the mother. Right. Another, abortion, uh, another uh, argument for abortion is abortion is legal. Right. Well, yep. <laughs> abortion might be legal, but uh, 
you know, does that mean it's right? I mean, yeah. something can be legal and still be wrong. Yes. There's God's laws and man's laws. You know, yeah. slavery was legal, yeah. but that didn't make it right. In Nazi Germany, killing Jews was legal. That, that was one of the main ways they argued at the Nuremberg trials. But yes. it was wrong because it was murder. Legal, but wrong. Right. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, in abortion, here's another, another argument. In abortion, no one is hurt since the fetus is not a person. Right. Well, this is simply begging the question here. Yeah. You assume it isn't human, even though it's alive and has human DNA, and then you pass judgment that it's not a person. Yeah. Well, you've got to define uh, what makes a person before you can attempt to make this kind of claim. Is being a person limited to attributes of thought, walking, awareness, etc.? Or is it uh, ontological? That is, is, is it an issue of the nature and the essence of life? Right. A person is still a person even if he can't think, walk, or be self-aware, mm. uh, like someone in a coma, for example. So personhood isn't defined by function alone, mm -hmm. but also by essence and nature. To divorce the two, function and essence, is to improperly define what a person is. Exactly. Also saying the fetus isn't a person uh, doesn't really make it so. That's right. just by fiat, you just make this claim. The doesn't fetus work. has uh, the, the nature of a human and, and is injured, of course, by killing. Yes, yeah. Uh, if it isn't a person, then there should be absolutely no guilt at all mm. with killing the life in the womb, right? Yeah, but of course. But then, then why do so many women have feelings of, of incredible guilt after an abortion? Does abortion really leave the woman uninjured? Countless women are psychologically harmed when they kill the child in their womb. Right. Here's another argument that we hear. Um, rape is a condition that justifies abortion. Right, yeah. Rape is horrible. But why should the child in the womb pay for the sins, the, the wrongdoing of another? Mm -hmm. uh, the baby is innocent of the offense, and if what is in the womb is human, then killing it because of the act of someone else would be wrong. It would be a terrible injustice. Where else do we see that concept? This person committed a crime, so we're going to kill you. It's just nowhere. It's, it's preposterous. Yeah. Here's a popular one. To restrict a woman's right to choose is to deny, to deny her rights as a woman. Yeah, okay, well this is a self-centered reason that ignores the human life in her womb. It puts the woman's personal interests and comfort above the value of the life of the baby. Right, and it's not denying a woman's rights any more than not having the no. right to murder, steal, or lie, etc. is denying a woman's rights. Again, it's a misuse of this argument. We never see that kind of argumentation outside of this it, It's issue. a smokescreen, it's a side issue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we hope that you can see that, that, that many of these pro-abortion arguments are really pretty lame. Mm. Um, they're easily refuted, uh, yet despite poor arguments in favor of abortion, every day babies continue to be murdered. It's a huge issue and we'll continue refuting more pro-abortion arguments shortly. Creation Ministries International focuses on the Bible's first book, Genesis, and the creation evolution issue. Many of our speakers are scientists with PhDs who, before joining CMI, were employed in various scientific fields. Creation Ministries speakers go to churches, equipping and encouraging people with the message of the truth and authority of the Bible and its relevance to the real world. To locate upcoming CMI events, or inquire about booking a speaker into your church, visit creation.com. Okay, we're back. We have a heavy topic today, refuting pro-abortion arguments. Now, as you've seen, the arguments used to support killing humans in the womb are, are easily refuted. Yeah. Um, let's do one more. Uh, here's an argument. There are too many people in the world. Right, yeah. And the refutation is... Since when does the value of human life depend on how many people there are? Yeah. Uh, besides, if the number of people is the issue, maybe they should start getting rid of sick people or old people yeah. or people that look funny and aren't good looking. Uh, where's that going to stop? Right. And, right, and maybe the people who are using this argument should volunteer themselves as the first ones to go, go. Yeah. rather than picking on other people. Um, you know, there, there are some people who are actually promoting these kinds of ideas today. I mean, yeah. this is scary. You know, there are uh, um, university professors giving lectures where students are standing up and clapping that we should get rid of people. Again, they're not volunteering themselves or their own families, right. I, I noticed. Yeah. You know, people like Peter Singer, who we mentioned earlier, have had their, their, their consciences so seared that they're unable to grasp these simple truths. I mean, he, he won't eat, eat a hamburger because it's inhumane but right. has no qualms about killing children after they're outside of the, the womb? 
Yeah. But that's all based on his evolutionary philosophy that we all, you know, descend from one common ancestor. That cows, that, that's where hamburgers come from, right. are related to, yeah, to he's humans gone in that completely way. Completely off the rails. Yeah. yeah. His views are shocking to most people, but they're consistent. Since he's rejected God and his word, the, the source of truth, Romans 1 talks about this. It talks about people who, uh, for example, for although they knew God, did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Mm -hmm. So people reject God and exchange worshiping God with worshiping animals. Yes. That's today's culture. Many kinds of animal uh, fetuses are protected by law, but not human fetuses. I mean, how backward is that? Yeah, yeah. The abortion industry is a horrible business that leaves women with deep emotional scars and a lot of guilt about what they've participated in. Killing unborn babies is not the solution to anything and only brings more trouble on those involved. It's a sign of, of a really sick society. Uh, it's a society that's a, that has abandoned God. Yep. Uh, you know, you, you look back in history to some of the cultures who rejected God and considered them uh, we, we consider them barbaric, right? Yeah, yeah. Israel, for example, in the times of the kings, when people abandoned obedience to God, they sacrificed their babies to the fake god Moloch. Yeah, uh, yeah. What's happening today is, well, that's just as barbaric as what the Israelites did then. Right, we look back and we think they're barbaric. Well, how are we going to be judged? We're yeah. here too. Yeah. Uh, many Christians are, are involved in providing support to women uh, so that they can cope with all that uh, uh, childbearing, bearing a child involves. Many active creationists have been involved in, for example, crisis pregnancy centers, for example. Uh, many young moms have been thankful for that kind of support. Others have found forgiveness for the guilt for what they've done through Christ, right. since he died to bear our guilt before God. Yeah. Pretty tough topic today. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Creation Ministries International, our, our focus is on the truth of Genesis, but the whole Bible is true. So occasionally we, we do get into other topics. Uh, we mentioned last uh, week that beliefs determine our behavior, of course, and that's certainly true about this week's topic. If you take God's word as plainly written, right. abortion is an abomination. Yeah, the Bible clearly says that you're human from conception and killing innocent humans is wrong. Uh, those truths enable Bible believers to discern poor argumentation found in pro-abortion arguments like we've done uh, in this last half hour. Right. Um, you know, Creation Magazine, um, which is where the content for this show, we get a lot of content from Creation Magazine. This is Creation Magazine Live. You know, this really helps you to think biblically in many areas. And it's a great teaching and equipping tool as well as being, you know, pretty entertaining. So you can view a free digital copy of uh, Creation Magazine. Go to creation.com slash free mag and you can get yourself a, a copy of the magazine. Um, and then uh, next week on Creation Magazine Live, well, I guess season it's going to be six. season six. This is the six. last one. That's right. This is our 120th episode. See you next time. <laughs>